Scuderia Ferrari, Il Cavalino Rampante. I'm sure you don't need Google Translate to understand what that means. Ferrari are the oldest Formula One team having competed in every world championship since 1950. But they aren't here just to tick boxes. The Prancing Horse holds 16 Constructors' Championships and 15 Drivers' Titles. Now let's go back in time and meet all of them. Alberto Ascari 1952-1953 Reigning world champions Alfa Romeo withdrew at the end of 1951 and Fangio was left without a drive. The 1952 season saw the rise of Alberto Ascari and Ferrari. Ascari won 6 out of 8 races that season and clinched the title halfway through, ahead of teammate and former world champion Giuseppe Farina. Fangio was back in 1953 but Ascari continued his red-hot form. He won the first 3 races of that season and secured another title. Ascari managed to win 9 consecutive races, which was a record for decades, equaled only by Sebastian Vettel and improved to 10 by Max Verstappen. Ascari died in 1955 and left an immense void for the Scuderia. None other than Juan Manuel Fangio was signed for the 1956 season and Il Maestro was in tune with the car from the start, but the title will go down to the wire at Monza in front of the Tifosi. Fangio and his teammate Collins fought a stubborn Sterling Moss. Disaster struck when Fangio had to retire. Collins was on course to win his first championship, but he pitied and handed over the car to Fangio. In that era, car sharing, ethics and sportsmanship were a thing. Fangio finished second and won the title. Young gun Sterling Moss started the 1958 season with a couple of wins and looked destined to win the title. Unfortunately, a series of unreliabilities and his main rival Mike Hawthorne constantly scoring podiums meant that the title would be decided at the last race in Morocco. Moss had to win the race, which he did, but Hawthorne managed to finish second and win the title by one point. In 1961, the title was to be disputed between Ferrari drivers, Wolfgang von Trips and Phil Hill. However, it will end up in tragedy. Von Trips was leading the championship and needed to finish ahead of Hill to wrap it up in front of the Tifosi at Monza. Disaster strikes when the German collided with Jim Clark, killing von Trips and 14 spectators. Phil Hill went on to win the race and the championship by one point. The Ferrari 156 is arguably the most famous Ferrari Formula 1 of all time thanks to its shark nose. The 1964 season was contested between Brits, teammates Jim Clark and Graham Hill versus John Surtees. Would be Surtees consistency at finishing on the podium that gave him a shot at the title in Mexico. With Jim Clark and Graham Hill going backwards in the race, John Surtees saw the opportunity to seal the title with another second place finish. Yet again, another Ferrari driver will win the championship by one point. Niki Lauda often referred to 1975 as the unbelievable year. Despite a shaky start in the first four races, the Ferrari 312T had no rival once the European season had started. Lauda won his first world title with five wins and a huge margin of a second place and reigning world champion Emerson Fittipaldi. In 1977, fully recovered from his life-threatening injuries, Lauda was ready to prove the world that he's still number one. He clinched the championship with two races to go and spectacularly terminated the contract with Ferrari. Ferrari's bosses were still bitter about Lauda's decision to withdraw from the Japanese Grand Prix a year prior. Lauda's replacement was Gilles Villeneuve. Jody Schechter came into Gilles Villeneuve team and stole the show. Round 13 of the season was at Monza. Jody Schechter and Gilles Villeneuve made it a Ferrari 1-2 and with this victory Schechter won the Drivers' Championship and Ferrari won the Constructors' Championship. It would be their last driver's title for 21 years. But the Tifosi's patience was repaid in full plus dividends, with arguably the golden era of Ferrari thus far. Michael Schumacher was a megastar in the making, having won the 1994 and 1995 titles, and Ferrari signed him for the 1996 F1 season from Benetton. It wasn't just Schumacher who left Benetton, but also Rory Byrne and Ross Brown. Schumacher would win a race in his debut season, Near misses in 1997 and 1998 showed that Ferrari was on the way to recovery. And oh boy they did. 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004 were not just driver's titles but also constructors. Only two of those titles were really contested, the rest Ferrari was just crushing the opposition. Such was their technological advancement that the FIA created new regulations to stop them. To some extent they did, but Ferrari would be back in 2007 to win both Constructors' and Drivers' Championships 
in an epic three-way finale at Interlagos, it was also a season where McLaren imploded. Kimi Raikkonen had an outside chance to become world champion and needed a lot of help from the racing gods. And they were more than generous that day. Hamilton had issues in the early laps and dropped down the order. Fernando Alonso was unable to match the pace of Felipe Massa. That meant Kimi Raikkonen would win the race and the championship by, you guessed it, one point. Ferrari added one more Constructors' Championship, but never a driver's one, despite having top drivers like Vettel or Alonso. Ferrari's strong bond with Formula 1 is obvious, but the Modena-based team is more than just that. Ferrari is a symbol of luxury, power and passion. Until we see them again on the top step, I raise my hat and say grazie ragazzi. I hope you liked this series so far, give it a like, drop me a comment, and I'll see you on the next one. Subscribe to the channel, and goodbye for now.